Hi, just a quick follow-up video to a mailbag uh, item that I got, which is a pedal cell uh, bicycle generator USB uh, thing. So it's basically a generator here, which um, goes onto your rim here, spins around and uh, puts some charge into some uh, super caps, which then uh, gives you a dual um, five volt USB output so you can charge your phone while you're cycling and stuff like that. Anyway, um, it was supposed to be dead. Uh, the person who sent this in actually said that they killed two of these things um, and uh, we couldn't see anything in the electronics if you want to uh, see it here it is here it was just a uh, potted um, thing so you know not easy to get in there and sort of like reverse engineer everything that's the uh, rectification diodes for the input um, here which just comes from the generator here there's uh, six wires there so I thought I'd just uh, a few people asked if I could actually um, check the motor actually have a look at the output of the motor and see if anything's failed there so that's what I'm going to do in this video so I'm just going to get a uh, pin out here I've soldered on um, six wires so I'm just going to go around and uh, try and find the pin out for this thing that one up there oh no 16 meg why is this 16 meg there Okay, anyway, it looks like that first pin doesn't connect to anything, so that's a not connected. Next, we got one, um, the second pin, so the second pin here, which I'll, I'm just going there, doesn't matter which direction, they don't actually have numbers, but this pin here connects to this pin here with 8 ohms. That sounds like a coil to me. Okay, so that's what we've got there. The three, which I couldn't, uh, well, essentially non-connected, uh, and three uh, to wind in. So it looks like we have our three windings in there, which is what you'd expect. If you have a closer up look at the board, and I'm gonna have to, because it's a gloss solder mask, you can see that, okay, we've got our three power lines there. And the other, I can only see one trace coming off that center pin. So maybe, They've got a uh, sensor in there um, or something. I can't see anything coming off these other pins. Maybe I can try and measure something uh, pierce through. If you're trying to probe uh, through a conformal coating, you can have really sharp probes to make sure you get through. I'll just uh, buzz that out to see if these go anywhere. But yeah, basically we've got uh, our three uh, winding wires plus, our, um, plus potentially up to three sensors there, or at least one. Well, that's strange. I'm getting bugger all out of any of those windings nothing that's 100 millivolts uh, per division and it's not a uh, it's not a scale thing <laughs> i'm getting nothing <laughs> nothing so what the heck's going on there i mean this is you know what you'd expect um to measure for a three-phase generator i don't know about the values um eight ohms but uh <laughs> You know, like this is like a three-phase generator going into a uh, diode rectifier and that gives you your output voltage that's exactly what you'd expect I mean surely it'd give me something if I'm spinning this sucker I mean I'm not going hugely fast but I expect to get something like what the so unless there is something in there because there was one trace going off which looked like I don't know it may have been going to a power source or something but like I like that's winding resistance that I'm measuring surely um like what all right let's try and actually rotate it faster um and you'll notice look look at all the spikes coming up when I turn on the Dremel but uh let's try and knit knit that's going pretty fast look I'm getting bugger all out of that nothing that is definitely eight ohms across there okay and it doesn't matter which winding I choose um it's just it's getting nothing wow what the so I don't know are all the windings like fused together or something like that aha uh -huh. I found an access uh keyway in here which gave me access to the two grub screws here and ta-da I'm now able to get this sucker off we can potentially open the motor. Seems like a decent motor. It uses like SKS bearings in it. What's that? It's got any branding? There's, well, okay, so much for that. There's zero branding on that. But as I said, there is an SKS bearing in there. I believe they're okay, aren't they? Um, I don't know. I, I guess I can unfold it, open it up. 
There we go. Here's the peekaboo inside there. I'd have to desolder it, but I'm getting um, the bugger all out of the windings. Oh, I checked the uh, winding resistances again. Yep. So we've got U, Y, W there. There are the three windings. We've got VDD, ground, and then H, U there, which H, I presume, would be Hall effect. So they've got a Hall effect sensor on one, only one of the windings. Obviously, they thought they might have three, but they only did one. So I guess um, even, but the generator was generating nothing. So uh, looks like I can pop this PCB out. Ta-da! Gotcha. It's our winding. Um, it's all a bit rough as guts, a bit how you're doing. But, uh, like, you know, don't see any melted windings or anything like that. So there's your rotor. And there's the magnets and the stators. And I, like, I don't know. So I would have expected to get, what? There we go. Something out of that. But there you go. That's interesting. They do have three Hall Effect sensors in there. Um, but they're only connecting up one of them. So, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. Um, I don't even know why they need that. Maybe it, like, it cuts it off at, like, a minimum RPM or something like that would be my guess. So what I've done is just measured uh, some DC resistance around the pins on here, and the operational one up here, which is actually connected, um, it measures, they all, th all three measure identical resistances in various combinations on the pins, so there's nothing obvious in terms of like one of them's, you know, gone kaput, shorted, whatever. So, eh. so there you go, we're getting eight and a half ohms on the winding. Oh, I've put this back on. Doesn't spin that good now. It gets stuckity duck. Put it on AC. And we get something out of it. <laughs> Not much. Aha, uh -huh. I think what's happened here, I've removed one of those magnets and uh, I think these were originally attached like this. So I think what's happened doesn't make sense to have the magnets in this location. I can start like getting them all out. And, whoa, there we go. <laughs> Hello, they're quite powerful. So I believe what is supposed to happen is, well, these are supposed to be attached to the rotor and the magnet is supposed to spin like this. So it's not really a squirrel cage motor, but why they've got the laminations in there, I don't, it's just a rotating magnet. Um, in induction motor with the with the stators, that's how it's supposed to work with a uh, rotating magnet in there. The only conclusion I can come to is that um, yeah, these magnets were supposed to be around this rotor like this, and you're supposed to have a rotating magnetic field, which then induces a magnetic uh, field in the state, a rotating magnetic field in the arts uh, moving magnetic field um, in the stator coils. Uh, as it rotates and um, Bob's your uncle. You get the um, three-phase generation out of your stator coil. So I can only presume that these things were originally like stuck on there and they've just flung themselves apart. And when they do, they just uh, obviously, um, they just attract themselves over to uh, the uh, stator laminations down in there and they stick to it and boom, your motor just flung apart and... That's why it doesn't generate anything anymore. Aha! Uh -huh. I got fooled for a second there. I thought that this looked like um, <laughs> a squirrel cage type motor because you've got the laminations in there and I thought these look like, like at normal distance, visual distance, these actually look like um, uh, the aluminium um, bars. Uh, often they use uh, copper as well uh, to go through there, but these aren't. <laughs> these are actually, these are actually the glue marks between the magnets that were supposed to hold them on. So, uh, yeah, it's completely come a gutsa there. They just haven't used enough glue on these things. They've just put a little bead down there and that's it. Unbelievable. I guess he was pedaling too fast and it just spun itself way off. Oh, wow. That is, that is terrible. That is terrible, Muriel. Unbelievable.
And especially when you've got like using it on a bike like this where the vibrations are going to be absolutely awful. You know, that like, no, 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 no. Aha, uh -huh. I got the last of them out here and that one just falls off fine, but I can't separate these two. So they're like glued together. Yep. Yep. So I think, I think that's what happened. I mean, I like, I can't see any, like there's no like super glue residue or anything. Like I can't see anything on there, but these two are obviously stuck together. All the others were kind of like individual and whoa, well, and then the whole thing is supposed to Go together, oh, like that. Um, <laughs> have I got one out? Yeah, but even those last two eventually uh, fell apart. So, like, there's basically no glue residue left on there. And, like, there's none. There seems to be none on, like, the ba the curved base of this thing, which is making contact. There was just an absolute little slither along the edge there. And, and that's what you can see in the rotor. Unbelievably crap quality. Wow. It's, oh, there's a washer in there as well. That's coming out, but I think that sucker has flung itself apart. I think that's just piss poor uh, construction of the rotor. <laughs> then once they fling apart, they actually magnetically attach to the stator, and then it's, <laughs> then it's completely gone ski. No wonder we'll get anything out of it. So this seems to be essentially a uh, brushless DC motor being used as a generator. Uh, you can see the alternating uh, north-south magnets there. They've marked it like that. But um, yeah, I was a bit, little bit confused by the uh, laminations in there. We've got our steel laminations. It almost looked um, squirrel cagey. So I guess that's to, you know, confine the magnetic field better or whatever. I don't know. I don't tear enough apart enough motors to uh, know this sort of thing. And of course, um, yeah, uh, you'd find three Hall Effect sensors on a DC brushless uh, motor. Um, but normally they're a motor to drive them. In this particular case, they're using it as a generator and they're only using one of the um, Hall Effect sensors output, as I said, maybe to you know, uh, detect low RPM or something like that because they don't have to uh, drive the thing or anything like that. I don't think they've got any synchronous uh, converter in there or anything to um, to do that. I don't think it's that fancy. Um, so, yeah, that's it. And it's just spun itself apart. It's completely come a gutter. So that's just terrible, Muriel, really. I mean, <laughs> no wonder the, I'm surprised it, like, lasted as long as it did. Uh, like, I uh, unbelievable. Okay, so I'm going to actually attempt to uh, glue these magnets back on. Um, just going to use some Araldite, I guess. <laughs> some five-minute epoxy. Um, you know, just just hold it on temporarily um, to try and get this thing back in. If I try and actually just put it in with the just the magnets holding themselves around there and onto there, then it, it doesn't have enough strength. It just sort of goes like... <sharp inhale> and just sucks the magnets over onto the uh, laminations of these stators there. Hopefully it doesn't ooze out, but I'll put some on there and just uh, try and stick the magnets on. Uh, I won't give up my uh, day job for a uh, roll on the production floor, that's for sure. Well, I'm not going to be riding my bike with this anytime soon, but there you go. And it doesn't feel very smooth, but uh, I think I might have goofed the magnets up in there because I uh, the little red permanent marker they had on there, well, it wasn't permanent. They'd all uh, rubbed off and um, there while I was like physically handling them and it was a dog trying to get it back on. So yeah, but, th but there you go. That's one volt per division. So it's now working. <laughs> Let's try the Dremel again. Wow, well, look at that. Okay, let's go to 10 volts per division. Try that again. Look at that, 10 volts per division. There you go. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. So there you have it. This uh, Cadence X pedal cell bike generator. Convert your cycling motion into electricity to charge your devices um, is a load of crap. As I said, the person who sent it in has gone through two of these and yeah, that's just, it just tore itself apart. Um, that's just a brushless uh, DC motor 
they're uh, pressing into use as a <laughs> generator on the bike and it didn't have nearly enough glue and then it's come a gutter. and how many out there I don't know have you got one of these are there like you know chats on the forums about everyone's cadence X uh, uh, generators failing and stuff like that so yeah there's nothing wrong with the electronics which I thought was um looks you know quite decent actually um, and I'm sure if I actually hook that back up to here it would you know it would work again and it was interesting how it uh, flung itself apart in there and the magnet stuck to the stators and when I took it apart I'm going mm, this is kind of like how does this kind of work um you know because it it just didn't make sense from a like a, a traditional motor topology uh point of view but it makes sense when you realize that all the damn magnets have flung off the stupid thing and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and discuss down below um, <laughs> what you think about the implementation of this uh, brushless uh, DC motor um, and pressing it into service as a generator because that 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 looks like all it is. It's not like a purpose design industrial type, you know, like commercial grade motor. In, in my opinion anyway, my vast opinion in our uh, bicycle generators. <clears throat> um, yeah, let us know what you think down below. Like, is this just like absolute garbage or like were they onto something with, um, you know, using this with, uh, they just, you know, bought a dodgy brand or maybe this is just like had a dodgy batch from the factory or something. I don't know, but you know, when you mount this on the bike, there's going to be a ton a vibration on here and that's and that's gonna uh, you know transfer down to the shaft and that's gonna be shaking the buggery out of the magnets and I uh, yeah <laughs> it's just completely fallen to bits and it was just interesting how like it felt smooth as silk it felt like you know uh, before I took it apart it was smooth as and we could measure uh, the three stator coils in there and it's so like it should have worked but no there, there was no rotating magnet so <laughs> no rotating magnetic field Eh, you don't get much out of your stator coils when your magnetic field's not moving. So, anyway, catch you next time. Hello.